Welcome everyone. Um, I'm glad to be here at the Remix Conference. Thanks for the invite. And I'm glad I made the cut for the, speak, for the talk. This is a uh, new version of a talk that I already have a video on my YouTube channel that covers this topic. I also recorded a video at home so I didn't know we needed to record these here. So this is my third time now actually doing this. Um, I'll include the links for all the source code, all the versions of the videos, and the associated blog post that goes along with all of this. Um, so intro to Remix, working with nested routes and dynamic routes. Who am I? My name is Aaron Saunders. I have a software development firm called Fully Innovative Inc. based in Washington, DC that I've run for about 12 years and intentionally focuses on getting black and brown folks into software. I hire people without computer science degrees. We train them how to write software and we pay them. Uh, I've been developing software for about 25 years now. Uh, I stumbled into Remix when looking for alternate solutions to quickly build solutions that does not require a heavy lift in technical understanding. And so that's how I ended up with Remix. And please check out my YouTube channel. I have a bunch of Remix videos and a bunch of videos on mostly JavaScript topics. So usually when I create videos, I go to the documentation, I read through the documentation, and then I say, well, that doesn't really make sense to me. <laughs> and then I try to follow along in the documentation and build something. So that's why if you look at a lot of my videos, they're very similar to documentation that's out there, but it's just kind of walking through it and explaining it in, to me, plainer language. So like here, I cut and paste this definition directly out of the Remix documentation. Um, and even when I read it sometimes, like I get it, but I can see how it might be kind of overwhelming for some folks. So nested routes, the general idea of routes, mapping to segments of the URL allowing the full URL to map to a hierarchy of route components and data dependencies that can be known before rendering. That's a lot. But so I translate, I translate that to say, I have a route, it has state, and hopefully it kind of documents what it does. That's, that's how I look at it. And then for dynamic routes, they say the dynamic segments, the ones starting with the dollar sign, will be parsed from the URL and passed through a loader on params object. That's assuming that you've read about what params objects are already, and you already understand what a loader is. So I translate to say, the thing with the dollar sign, you can get inside your code. To me, one of the benefits I found with the nested routes and the parameterized routes, as I call them, is you can build separate components with specific functions. And the other thing is the passing along state in the URL that, that if done properly, can be intuitive. And then also self-documenting when done, if done properly. Even when I wrote this sample, I had to change the name of some of my files and routes so that when I just looked at the URL, I could understand clearly what was going on. So this is an example route from my app. Um, I'm in a problem folder. That thing with the dollar sign is a parameter. And then this URL takes me to a, a form where I can actually add a solution. And the ID, the problem ID is the ID associated with the problem that solution is going to be associated with. The parameter, the problem ID, can be accessed in a component using use param, and it can also be accessed in a loader function through the params. So my sample app, called Big Big Problems, uh, basically allows you to enter problems. Uh, the problems have a relationship with solutions, and then the users can vote on the solutions. Uh, the full-blown app, which I said the source code will be posted, is built with Prisma, SQLite, Semantic, UI, just the CSS, and of course, Remix. And the source code will be found in uh, GitHub. This is show app here. So this is the app. Um, I can just write a big problem. Big problem. Adds problems, problems get rendered in the list. And then based on a problem, let's see, we go to a page. And then based on that, we can add solutions, which is, as you see as I go through, which is actually all of this stuff inside of here is in my nested route, being rendered in the outlet. And so that's kind of what this diagram is showing. My route 
problem ID dot TSX is everything in kind of that pinkish, it's probably a better term for what color that is, that pinkish color. So that's the whole container. And then inside of that, there's a page route. And then, I mean, sorry, there's a page outlet. And then the route problem slash problem ID dot index dot TSX is what's being rendered inside this container. And then for the other page you saw, once again, the problem ID route is at the top level. And then what's being rendered in the outlet is in this lovely pinkish color again. And that's the other form to actually add a solution. Now, when I was reading through this, I had to go through this multiple times to kind of wrap my head around it. Um, the magic of naming folders with parameter names and then having other files at the exact same level that also have the same name as a parameter. But eventually, I, I figured it out, and hopefully this can kind of help someone else along the way. So this top level page called index TSX is pretty straightforward. It just lists all the problems that exist in the database. Each link, sorry, each problem has a link, which starts us on this, this lovely journey down nested routes. Um, and here's the code for it. And as you can see, the URL for it is problems slash with the problem ID being provided. And this is kind of the source code from index.tsx. The specific part here is on line 68, where you can see I have the link that wraps around it. And then here's kind of the folder where my code is laid out. And if you start at the bottom, you can see index.tsx, and that's where we actually list the problem. And then when we go to, when we click the link, the next route that we're going to is the problem ID.tsx which is at the top level, it's kind of hard to see here, of this problems folder. And that is this route, routes slash problems at problems at problem ID dot TSX. So the parameters in problem, the value that I want is in problems ID. So this page is, like I said, this top level wrap, wrapper component for all the other routes that exist in the problems folder. In my, in my wrapper component, I have some action buttons on the top, but the important thing is the outlet, which is where all the child routes are going to get rendered inside of that outlet. So this is a snippet of source code from my problems, my problems ID.tsx file. So as I said, you can see this is a wrapper at the top. It kind of takes the problem content, kind of renders some information about the problem content. I, uh, use a location to determine if I should display the buttons at the top and use the action buttons. And then you could see the action, the, the one that we're um, mostly concerned with is the add solution. And what I'm doing here, which is I found pretty cool, is that I can do relative routes. Um, so I don't have to go through and put slash dot problem, slash problem ID, slash add solution to relative routes get it. And I was also pretty wow that I could actually go back using a relative route. So I thought those were some pretty cool things. So when I just want to hit cancel, I just do like a normal directory and go back up two levels and I'm, I'm where I want to be. And then the last part is the outlet that's at the bottom of the page. The, this, was a, this was a part that I found a little difficult to understand at the beginning, but the, the concept of this index.tsx that exists inside of this kind of nested route it's the kind of the last, well, it's, it's basically the default route inside this directory of problems. And so, and so what, sorry, a prob, the problems slash problems ID. And so what's happening is that it is the default route that will be rendered when I go there. So if I go back to, probably easier to just go to my app. The default route when I come here is rendering all of the solutions. And so my index, where am I now? So my index.tsx is my default route and what it does is just renders all of the solutions by default. I don't have to do anything else. I just click on the link. It says, oh, index.tsx, render all the solutions that are associated with this top level problem with the problem ID. And it renders it in the outlet that it was defined. And that's kind of, once again, looking at your directory. I go to problem ID.tsx, it renders that, then it says, oh, the name of this file, problem ID, matches the directory. Let me go see what's in the directory. Oh, the directory has an index.tsx. Oh, let me render that too. And so that's how the page gets rendered appropriately. And 
that's what this diagram is once again with the pink around the outside and the default index.tsx being rendered with the solutions. And then the last thing we're gonna show here is this add solutions.tsx. And that's driven from clicking on this add solutions button, which is in the wrapper. And so when I click on that link, it's going to render this route. And because add solutions is inside this folder problem slash problem ID, it's gonna get rendered inside that same outlet. And that's what this diagram says, problems ID. It has the outlet, I link the button to add solution. Since the add solution's inside this directory, it's gonna get rendered in that outlet. Oh, it's gonna get rendered in that outlet. And that's that kind of everything. And so just to kind of go back through the app, because it seems like I have a, some time here. Uh, one of the other cool things that I found and I was discussing it over dinner was kind of the, the magic of updating the page dynamically for me, which kind of blew my mind when I first saw it. Um, if we look at, I'm kind of digressing from my talk a little bit here, but if we look at my talk here on, I mean, sorry, my code here on this index page. So this index page here, where is it? Here it's just looping through all of the solutions that I pulled back from my SQLite database and I have the ability to kind of vote on each one of them. And vote, when I click on a vote, I, assuming this was the right way to do it, I, wrap a, I just wrap a form around each one of my buttons. When I click on that, it submits a post, it calls my action, calls my action at the top, it gets all the information through Prisma, access my SQLite database and updates it, right? Now, when I normally write a React application, after that, I need to either have a use effect or something listening to recognize my data has changed, and then I need to make another database call to update my view. I don't need to do it here, and when, when it just worked, I was kind of baffled. But if you watch, if you can see here, well, this hopefully it doesn't crash, on this first one, it has 20, well, there's two things that happens. This first one has 22 votes, and also it sorts the results. And so if I pick something down here, like tow the car, it only has one vote. When I clicked the vote, it updated the page, it got the data back, and it sorted the list all for me without me writing any other magic, which completely blew my mind when the first time it happened, someone just had to ask, like, what the hell just happened? So that when I got up here, I could explain why that happened. Um, but uh, I love Remix. It's, um, it's great technology. We're gonna try to figure out how we can kind of leverage it on some client projects I actually posted into Discord. Is it ready for prime time? I think it's good enough for the kind of work we're doing. We're not launching rockets or doing anything you know, crazy like that. Um, and that's the end of my talk. Let me go back to my info page. This is me, you can find me on Twitter and GitHub. Once everything that I post on YouTube, I post all the source code also in my GitHub repo. And I usually write a blog post that goes along with it also. Um, this is my YouTube channel, there's tons of stuff there, but I have everything broken out in playlists so you can find just a specific either React, and then there's also a separate Remix playlist. Um, and that's it, thank you everyone.